Trick Trick. What's up, brother? Welcome to Live with Steve Lobel, man. It's a pleasure and an honor, man. Shout out to Midwest 313. Yes, sir. So, um, you know, on, on Live with Steve Lobel, we like to just talk about real stuff and just go through things and educate the younger generation, generation sure. that watches Live with Steve Lobel through Hip Hop DX. Um, I'm going to throw out some names and, um, you know, we'll just talk about some things, you know. Mm -hmm. We have a mutual friend. Um, he passed away. Proof from D12, Eminem's group. Um, can you talk about Proof? Oh, shit. For two hours. Two, 20, 20, two days. Two years. Proof was in the Goon Squad. Right. Before it was a D12. He was, uh, you know what I'm saying? He was he was the third man. He was actually, don't you can't look at, uh, what is that, uh, Wikipedia. That's the worst source of information in the world. But uh, he was actually the third member of the Goon Squad. Uh, it was me, Styles, and Big Proof. If you go look at the album cover, you see him stand, me with a gun, Styles with a gun, and Proof without a gun. That wasn't his thing. <laughs> you know, he was, you know, Proof was the cat that introduced me to the whole culture of hip hop. I didn't, uh, like, I was, a, I was a street nigga, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm in the hood selling dope. Rap was the fun shit, you know? And uh, it was a lifestyle that, you know, was mandatory at that time that I lived the way I live, but we recorded at Mo Master Productions. And it's a studio we all recorded at. And every time, like, stu proof sessions would be in the morning when, when my sessions was in the morning. When, so when i get there, he'd be leaving or the other way around. And he would always give me some game every time. He, younger, he was younger than me, but he'd always give me some game. And I used to, at first, I used to look at me, this little nigga get on my damn nerves. He always saying some old educated ass shit, you know. But I'm a young dumb nigga at the time, so I don't, you know, I'm, you know, doing my hood shit. And, uh, but then I started this when he first, he said, you know, it's five elements to hip hop, you must know this. You can't be in rap and you don't know the five elements of hip hop. And I said, well, what the fuck is the five elements right. of hip hop, bro? <laughs> he says, uh, <laughs> he said, it's rapping. Uh, now, this, don't quote my order, but it's rapping, uh, break dancing, graffiti, uh, the dress code and beatboxing. Exactly. And uh, when he told me that, I said, "That's some interesting shit." He said, "If you don't have those elements, and you know, you don't have hip hop." I said, "That's what's up." He said, "You got to be involved with the culture, trick." Like, the proof taught me how to perform. Like you know, the first time I got they said somebody wanted me to do a show, I was like, uh, "I don't know about that." You know, performing in front of people and shit. And proof, like, no, nah, I'm gonna show you. How to do, he taught me how to do the whole audience. My show is so badass right now, and I owe that to Proof. Proof opened my eyes to how to perform. You know, I have a badass stage show, and anybody that ever seen you would tell it. Wow. I'll tell you that. I didn't, know, I, I didn't know that. Proof, yeah. I didn't, Proof was my guy. He's, he's the first one that ever introduced me to him. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Man, I, me too. <laughs> last time I saw Proof, we were in the La Park Hotel in L.A. And you know he was drinking. You know that he had like to drink and have a good time all the time, but he was always real with it. He didn't drink when uh, when he was with the Goon Squad. We had a, we had a, some some licensing gold success as independent artists, and we celebrate independent artists and independent record label. And we celebrated with Pipers and Moet and Proof. Still would not drink. And he's told me one time. I'll tell you some shit. Pete told me. He said, I said. Uh, Come on, man, we got, we just sold, man, we fucking independent. We just sold all these records. He like, he said, I know I'm with you. He said, but I made a deal with God that if I did any drugs or took any drink, I would lose my ability to freestyle. I swear on neighborhood, this wow. is what, that's what my brother told me. He told me that out of his own motherfucking mouth, he said. We was riding around in a 96 Jeep Grand Cherokee, riding down Curtis, finna turn down Santa Barbara after the whole party when he wow. told me that was the reason he didn't take a drink. Well, wow. you know, I, I used to always frequently go to Detroit mm -hmm. and the Midwest because a lot of independent retail stores were out there. Mm -hmm. um, and I would come out there with different artists like Fat Joe, mm -hmm. Bone Thugs and Harmony, Common, Common Sense, and we go to independent retail shops. And I just was out there recently, I went to go visit um, Proof and the Mausoleum. Mm -hmm. um, so you've been in the game for a while, mm -hmm. and you know, you're OG, and you're very respected. How do you see the music industry from back then when you started to 2016, the business of the music business? I'd say more, Cash back in the day was more inclined to be in touch with the business aspect of it as uh, a little bit different now. Now people just want to be famous. And, it, and it's, um, 
I, it's almost a, a musical epidemic <laughs> because you got so many cats that just stay in the game, not for the culture, not for the talent, not for the, and I'm not, you know, I don't take away from nobody and what they do. Your gift is your gift and how you express it and do it, that's up to you. But, you know, if I had to judge from an, an executive standpoint and from an investor standpoint and from a consumer standpoint, I would not be impressed with what I see as far as uh, uh, the ethics and the, the workflow. That's an amazing word right there. The workflow of today, it's like you sit on the toilet and you just click the link in my bio, click the link in my bio, download, download, upload, upload, just, you know, and it's, it's not... Nobody beating up the streets no more. Cats don't want to go see the DJ. You know, me personally, I'm tired of going to see the DJ. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's just me, though. I'm 20-something years going to see the damn DJ. But you got to go see the DJ. Right. You know, and cats don't really want to go see the DJ. Right. What I talk about is always because I come from the era of promotional tour mm -hmm. and taking vinyl to DJs, to the college radio, to mix shows. Mm -hmm. And you know, kicking the door open and getting a DJ to play the record and putting up um, poster boards in retail stores and giving out samplers and t-shirts and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that that is over now. Yeah. And, and I say that the younger generation now, they, you know, five years ago, maybe someone will sell their soul or snitch on their buddy to get a check to be famous. Mm -hmm. These days, the younger generation, they don't even care about the money now, they just want to be famous. They, be famous. they don't want to put the work in. So is there anybody And they're willing to do anything with sacrifice? Their morality, sacrifice. There's no morals no more. Yeah. There's no yeah. principles. They sacrifice so much just to be somebody that somebody can see, you know. Well, that's because of social media. And judge you. Yeah, that's because of social media. Is there anybody that you like currently that you might listen to that's out? Currently? Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> that's, yeah. Kendrick Lamar. Uh, I like young J. Cole, you know what I'm saying? Uh, despite what anybody ever thought about it. You know me and him, but I like the youngster. He's dope as hell. You know? They have substance. Like a, a lot of other rappers have no substance. And man. you know, you know, Kendrick's name was K Dot. Um, you know, I had managed Nipsey Hussle with Big U, and we were on a game tour, and Nipsey was on that tour, and J Rock was on a tour, and Kendrick was K Dot was his hype man, and now he just took home 11 Grammys. So hard work does pay off. Oh yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So um, focus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Eminem, probably to me, top three best rappers of all time. Your relationship with him. I mean, I heard you talk about it before, but your relationship with him and how did you meet him? I met him through Proof. Proof, we, uh, Fire Ella, Fire Elements. Proof had a show with the group Fire Ella at uh, the uh, Magic Stick in Detroit on what was a very famous venue, still good venue for good sound. It's good for hip hop. And, but Fire Ella had a show there. And uh, M and Paul came to the show. And I had, he put me up on him already, but I had never met him face to face, you know. Um, but when I remember seeing M and Paul, and I told Proof, them some mean looking ass white boys, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that day, crazy, M was, I, M was like, yo, Proof, let me hear the, some beats you did, you know. We need to get together and do some beats. And I was like, hell yeah, I got some beats for you. I said, I'm gonna make a tape. When I go back to the studio, to Mo Master, I'm going to make a tape of some of the beats I did, and then I'm going to get it to you. I said, but tomorrow, I got to go to Alabama and do a show. When I got to Alabama to do the show, we had to go to Tennessee after that, and then back to Montgomery, Alabama, and then back to Nashville. So when I got back, I called Proof. Hey, I got to get these beats to Eminem. I called him Infinite. <laughs> Nice. By mistake. Right. I was like, I gotta get these beats to Infinite. And he was laughing like a motherfucker. Who? I said, Eminem. He said, you know, he just went out there with Dre yesterday. Wow. I was like, that's dope as fuck. Uh, I said, Dr. Dre. He said, yes, Dr. Dre. I was like, I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck is they finna cook up? Jesus Christ, I can't wait to hear this shit. And the rest is history. The rest is history. Um, Detroit of Detroit versus everybody, right? Mm -hmm. It's funny, I just left Toronto and I met the cat who started it, but I met him a few times, so he gave me a hat, said New York versus everybody. Mm -hmm. That song, Detroit of everybody, with you and M and Big Sean and so on and so forth, what made you guys do that? You know what, I'm, it was a, Paul Rosenberg had the idea to do the song. And Paul's M's manager. Yeah, yeah, so it was his idea and then he called Royce and was like, Royce, yo, I'm gonna do this song called Trick and you know, let's get this shit cracking. Let's see, see what everybody think about it. And uh, 
Shit, before you know it, Marshall was like, yo, when are you coming to the studio? All right, I'll be there tomorrow. So went out there to the studio and recorded it, had, you know, I did my part, you know, I listened to the whole record and did the ad lib through the whole record and then uh, did the ending. But I did take that instrumental <laughs> and took it to the hood and put 16 cats on that remix too. So it was amazing. <laughs> yeah, Get thank you. Man. What's happening? It's your big homie Trick Trick. And you tuned in to live with Steve Lobel. You understand me? Hey, yo.